at six, the Omicron variant fueling new COVID cases in Houston and across the country. We asked a doctor the same question so many of you are asking. When will this all finally be over? And six months after a man was followed home from a restaurant, then robbed and killed, police have made an arrest. And they say it's not the first time the accused killer has taken a life. Plus, a team of armed robbers hold up a game room, and police say one of the suspects is a 14-year-old girl. But we want to begin tonight with the rising threat of COVID-19 in our area. Harris County raised the threat back to orange, which means that there is an ongoing uncontrolled level of the coronavirus here in our county. And we have just learned of the first COVID death in Harris County. In fact, the first one in the country that's linked to the Omicron variant. Harris County Judge Lena Hildago says the patient was a man in his 50s who was not vaccinated. The Omicron variant is hitting older fo folks particularly hard. A majority of the severe breakthrough cases are in folks 65 and up. More than two thirds, 69 percent of breakthrough COVID-19 hospitalizations are on folks 65 and older. But it's much better when folks have their booster. OK, so health officials also claim Omicron cases are doubling every two to three days compared to Delta, which doubles, we're told, every 11 days. Sounds familiar, right? Nearly two years into the pandemic, every time it seems like we've turned a corner, there's a new alert. So is there an end in sight? Of course, we'd all like to know that. ABC 13's Nick Natario talked to Dr. Peter Hotez about the future of the pandemic and joins us live with more from the newsroom, Nick. Well, these types of variants, Omicron, like we're dealing with now, is why it's so hard to give a firm date. So we wanted to ask the question and pose to it, exactly when will the pandemic come to an end? Well, Dr. Peter Hotez says the key is vaccinating the globe. That will cut down on variants like we're dealing with now, he says, which will help bring an end to this faster. Hotez says once that happened, he's not sure COVID will even be a virus that we're going to have to live with. I know there are many of you that want to know when this is going to come to an end. I can tell you that Pfizer CEO says that it may happen in 2024. Hotez, though, not convinced. In fact, he says we may do so well that this may not even be a problem we normally have to deal with each year? Not necessarily. I mean, there are viruses that, that come and go and, and don't return for a period of years as well. So I think there are a lot of possible scenarios. I think, for instance, we don't know how long this Omicron wave will last. Um, some are saying a matter of weeks. Others are saying, no, we don't know. It could linger on for quite a while. All right, another question we have is if you are fully vaccinated and you have the booster, are you protected against Omicron? Well, right now, research is being done to take a look at this. However, it appears the booster does help, but may not help as much as before. Now, the question as far as protection with Omicron, Hotez says if you had COVID before, it also doesn't offer much protection against a new variant. He says the boosters definitely do help, but they may not offer that same protection like they did against the Delta variant. There is a good possibility that you will get breakthrough symptomatic infection with COVID. The good news is uh, the overwhelming number of those cases are not severe. And so uh, so you have some comfort in knowing that it's highly unlikely you're still going to require hospitaliz that you'll require hospitalization for COVID. Tomorrow, President Joe Biden will outline a plan for the country to combat the Omicron variant. We asked Hotez about what he would like to hear from the president. He says he says he wants not only a plan, but he wants a plan to make testing more readily available for Americans, especially those at home kits. He also wants a plan for health care workers because many of them will have breakthrough cases, he does believe, with the Omicron variant. And he also suggested that this plan needs to be in place for health care workers because it may not impact the major hospitals, but those rural hospitals could have a real issue with Omicron. In the newsroom, Nick Dottorio, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. All of us being a little more cautious these days, Nick. Thank you. Well, Moderna has a larger dose of its COVID-19 booster vaccine significantly increases antibody levels against Omicron. The company says the current 50 microgram dose increased antibody levels 37 fold. However, a 100 microgram dose increased levels 83 fold. Moderna says it's up to public health officials to decide whether the booster should be that larger dose. 
Moderna's original two-dose vaccine is 100 micrograms, with the booster shot at half that size. Now, Pfizer's booster is the same size as its original two-dose series. And here is a reminder of who is eligible to get a booster shot from the CDC. Anybody 16 and older can get a booster shot of the Pfizer vaccine at least six months after they complete the original two-dose series. For Moderna, it's anybody 18 and older six months after completing their two-dose series. And for the single dose Johnson & Johnson, anybody 18 and older can get a booster two months after they get the, the only shot. Adults can choose any vaccine for a booster shot that they prefer. Now, concerns about Omicron are sparking new demand for COVID tests. You can go to abc13.com if you need links to free testing sites all around the Southeast Texas community. Some sites do require an appointment, so you want to make sure that you call ahead or go online and register. A week after HISD's former chief operating officer and a contractor were indicted on public corruption charges, Superintendent Millard House says he's never seen such a failure in his 26 years as an educator and former COO Brian Busby and landscaper Anthony Hutchison allegedly schemed to build the district for $7 million worth of work that was never completed. House says he's outraged by the charges and had already ordered a complete review of the systems for contracting and vendors before the arrest. We'll have more from our exclusive conversation with House coming up at 630. And a man charged with a second capital murder offense is part of a larger crime ring. Investigators say they busted earlier this summer. And just today, officials announced the charging of Devon Jordan for the robbery and murder of a jewelry of Jeffrey Johnson in League City, but it's all part of a larger crime ring that affected many more victims. ABC 13's Maya Shea is at Capitol Grill, where Johnson was allegedly followed home with more on this one. Maya? Yeah, it's a scary scene. Many of you may remember last few months when we talked about the string of violent robberies around the Galleria uptown, uh, all the upscale areas here in Houston, and Jeffrey Johnson was apparently followed out of here at the Capitol Grill. What we're learning from court documents of the arrest in his accused murder is that these cases are widespread and spanned across our region. When Jeff Johnson was followed from Capitol Grill and then shot in his own garage earlier this summer, it was devastating to his longtime employees, especially Ricardo Buenahora. If you do a mistake, you, he teach you from the mistake that you made. So a super, super, super good individual. Almost immediately, investigators believe Johnson's murder was linked to a string of violent robberies and shootings around the Galleria area. Shortly after his death, they were able to arrest and charge Devon Jordan for the robbery and murder of Joshua Sandoval. But League City detectives knew they had more work to do. There were numerous individuals involved in this, and they all had different levels of involvement. Some of them rented the vehicles, let the other ones use them. Uh, some of them were drivers. Some of them were actually actors in committing the robberies. In court records released today, investigators link that white Mercedes SUV seen at the site of Johnson's shooting to half a dozen crime scenes in Houston. Records also show between May and June, Jordan's cell phone location was linked to robberies and shootings in Midtown. The Sandoval case in the Washington Corridor, River Oaks, Sugar Land, Memorial Villages, and Johnson's case in League City. Investigators say the M.O. was the same. Pick out targets wearing expensive jewelry, driving nice cars, and then follow them home to rob them. They were committed from, uh, from the get-go. They, you know, they, once they picked the target out, they were committed to stay with that individual until they you know, were satisfied. In Johnson's case, court records show a styrofoam drinking cup tossed near his home the night of the shooting provided the crucial DNA evidence linking Jordan and the scene. Now charged with two capital murders, Johnson's friend says Jordan has only one place to be. If this person is in a killing spree or killing more than one person, he doesn't deserve to see the light no more. He deserves just to be in jail forever, period. Court records show that Jordan's arrest is far from the end of the investigation as more charges stemming from the string of robberies near the gallery area could be forthcoming. In Houston, Maya Shea, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Prosecutors are responding to the backlash over the 110-year prison sentence handed out to Houston truck driver convicted in a deadly explosion in Colorado. 
Rogel Aguilera Medeiros was convicted of vehicular homicide and 23 other charges for causing an 18-car pileup that killed four people in Denver two years ago. He was sentenced to the mandatory minimum for each count to be served consecutively. Well, more than 4 million people have now signed a change.org petition saying that sentence is too harsh and it should be lowered or commuted to time served. Today, the district attorney in Colorado's Jefferson County released a statement reading in part, quote, the sentence, which our office requested the minimum for, is within the purview of the court and reflects the judgment of the legislature. Just as the law mandates this outcome, it also provides future opportunity to revisit the sentence, and we will again pursue an appropriate outcome if that opportunity arises after consulting with the victims and survivors and receiving their input. New details about the crash that killed the Texas A&M student from the Woodlands. State troopers say Chance Gibson was speeding when he hit another vehicle, seriously injuring the other driver. The crash happened it's Saturday morning on State Highway 105, just west of Plannersville in Grimes County. The university says Gibson was on his way home for the holiday break, and according to state troopers, Gibson was driving unsafely when his car began to hydroplane. He went into oncoming traffic and struck a Nissan. Gibson was killed, and the driver of the Nissan was taken to the hospital with injuries.